Okay. Um, so peer reviewed articles, what that means is that they've gone through a, a masked review process. So the way that it works is if I do a research study, I write up my results in an article and I send it to a journal. The journal then takes my name off of it and they send it to two or three reviewers who I don't know who they are. And those two or three reviewers then give me feedback through the editor. So we never, it's a, that's what we mean by mask. Like nobody ever knows who it is. And the purpose of doing that is to check to make sure that the methodology is rigorous, that things make sense, that sort of thing. And it's, it's done anonymously so that people can give really clear and direct and hopefully helpful feedback. There are lots of flaws with the process, <laughs> but that's the generally accepted way that we determine that um, research is rigorous. And so that's why it's important to focus on peer reviewed articles. So that means things like newspaper articles, commentaries, that kind of stuff. We can use it, but not for the purposes of this project. For the purposes of this project, I wanna stick with peer reviewed journal articles. Some reports are okay. So um, like there's a AAU study. We do it here at the U, it's the campus climate study. And we participate here in the U, but it's a national study. That's an example of a report that it's okay to use, but I don't wanna use a ton of reports because it's also important to look at the research. So if you do want to add an article, use the last name, first three words of the article format. That way it makes it super easy to search and then put it in the to read or if you've already read it, add it to the subject folder, which we'll talk about later. As you're reading, um, one of the thing I want to point out from here is that when we're annotating articles, the finding section is what the findings and discussion is what that article tells us. So for example, if you're reading an article, you, you read the articles and you the first like three or four pages is like background and lit review and all that stuff. And in that section, they frequently have statistics. So they'll say one in four college women experience sexual violence and then they'll cite it, right? That is, original research that they went and looked up. So if we want to cite that one in four college students is experiences sexual violence, we need to go look up that original article. What we cite from this article is just what they talk about in their findings section. So it's what they found from the study that they did. Um, so that's the biggest distinction I wanted to make there. And then within this spreadsheet, like this is just the, I'm not gonna go through each one of these because this is the description of what um, each column is. Hi, Mary Jo. Um, Hi. So that's, that. those are sort of the instructions sheet. The other thing in this document is um, the two spreadsheets. So um, we sep I separated these on purpose. It's, it feels a little bit like a false dichotomy. So we have this general relationship and sexual violence spreadsheet for articles that are generic, right? So like they include all students, they don't focus on any particular sub, sub identity. Um, the relationship violence and, and minoritized people, that's a separate spreadsheet because that's really important information for us to know since we're saying we're working from a power and identity conscious perspective. And so that's why they're separated out. Um, when you are in this spreadsheet, what you'll, uh, in this column where it says minoritized population centered, it's no, the word centered is really important because if the article is just about college students and they break it down and they tell us how many LGB students are in the study or they tell us how many students with disabilities are in the study, that's not a study about people with disabilities. They just happen to include people with disabilities in their study, which everybody should be doing, but they're not, right? And so when you come to this column, it's if that, population was centered. So if the article was about them. So you can see here, this one that I annotated, you can see right in the title of the article, the article is about, it's called Perceptions of College Campus Alcohol and Sexual Violence Prevention Among Students with Disabilities, right? So that's a pretty straightforward one. This is a drop-down box. So even though 
boxing people into one identity is the exact opposite thing that we want to be doing <laughs> in social justice work. We're doing it anyway. And we're doing it anyway because this helps us short sort the spreadsheet quickly. So then we can go find all of the articles about students with disabilities. Um, if it if the article you're reading doesn't fit into one of these categories, um, then you can write your own in there. I do see I need to add um, multiple because there are several articles that have multiple. So I'm going to add that real quick. Um, so it's in there. So now you can click on any of them or you can write in your own if it doesn't fit. Um, same with the type of violence, it's also a drop down box. So I'm asking you to pick one of these. The vast majority of articles are about sexual violence broadly, meaning that they cover, they try and cover everything. Um, but we do have it broken down in by sexual assault, stalking, domestic dating violence, or childhood sex, sexual abuse. So um, you can do that as well. But like I said, the most most of them will be the broad category of sexual violence. Um, so yeah, so just as we go through these first A through F columns are probably pretty obvious what goes in them. Um, the purpose statement, it would be awesome if you can succinctly say what the purpose of the article is. You can draw from the article itself if you want. So you can see here, I used their words. So that we don't plagiarize letter later, make sure you put when you're directly quoting and put the page number. The reason this is question mark for the page number is because this is an article that's like an online first article. So it actually doesn't have page numbers yet. The next column is methodology. So this is another area that it may feel like, I don't know what she's talking about. So I'm gonna explain these. Um, so it is a drop down box. Qualitative research is any research where they go out and they talk to people, they do interviews, it's got people's words in the study. These are very rare in sexual violence research. So it's, we don't, unfortunately, we don't come across many of them. In the quantitative column, there are two different kinds that I want us to track. One is longitudinal. So a quantitative study that's longitudinal, it will say, this is a longitudinal study. Longitudinal means what? What does longitudinal mean? Over time. Yes, they talk to people multiple times over time. So it'll say quantitative other is all the other quantitative work. So the reason I'm being so basic with this is that most other quantitative studies are cross-sectional, but I just, the ones that stand out are the ones that take place over time with this particular topic. A conceptual and a theoretical piece is an article that's scholarly in nature, but they didn't go out and survey anyone. They didn't go talk to anyone. They're just using scholarship to make an argument. So if they didn't do a study, but they are still, it's still a, a research article, that's a conceptual piece. A law review is a law review. Like it will say at the top, law review, and they're really long and really complicated, but do them anyway. Um, and then a content or discourse analysis, that would be like somebody doing a website study. So there are actually lots of these right now. Like people are going out and saying, we did a website or we did a content analysis of all the websites at Texas universities to see what those websites are saying about sexual assault on campuses. So that's what we mean by content or discourse analysis. Again, they'll say in their methodology section if they're doing that. And then mixed methods means that they're doing multiple of these things. So this column is not, I mean, do it, but don't stress out about it. And if you don't know, put a question mark. Um, I'm happy to go back in and look at it and make suggestions. I also think you'll get the hang of it as you go. Um, so that's what goes in that column. The next column is also in the methodology section of the article. The next column is about um, who the participants of the study are. So this study had 51 students with disabilities as their sample, and it took place at a single institution. 
you can see the next one under, they had eight undergraduate black women in their study and it was a single campus. So that's what you're looking for. The percentage white is which students, or, or how many participants in the study were white? It's, I know that's a weird column to have, but it's striking as I've been looking at literature over the years, it's really striking to me that the numbers are almost always between 75 and 85. So it's just, and that's probably because most campuses have about 75 to 85% students white, um, but it's still just interesting to see these trends. Okay, last two columns and we're done. We can chat questions. So this column of key findings. So this is you getting to say, so it's, you know how most articles are written. They say introduction, review of the literature, theoretical framework, methodology, and then the last two sections are usually something like findings, discussion, or last three, findings, discussion, and then they'll do like limitations or recommendations or things like that. So this should come usually from the findings section, though it sometimes comes from the discussion section. So sometimes people write finding sections in a language that looks like it's another language. Like they are so technical in their way that they think about statistics that it, it literally feels like you're reading another language if you're not a statistician. If that's happening, just skip the findings. Don't try and read something in another language because if they're writing it like that in their discussion section, they'll get to the point. So many times in articles, the first paragraph of the discussion section is actually the most helpful paragraph in the entire argument or the entire, entire article, because they'll say in plain English, this is what we learned from this study. So that's what goes in this key findings column is what do you think is most helpful for all of us to know about this study? And this, this column is somewhat objective meaning that you're you're telling us what the authors said their findings are you're not saying whether they're good or bad findings you're not doing any of that you're just saying this is what they found so you can see here um, in this article the students with disabilities said that programming was not inclusive or relevant to their experiences it was either stereotypical representations or it didn't address ability at all and then some of the findings the author said would be the same for the general student population, meaning all students, not just students with disabilities. Things like programs didn't account for the realities of college life, online programs were boring and repetitive and forgettable. Like there's all that kind of stuff. And then at the very end, it talked about um, that there's a desexual, the desexualization of students with disabilities often contributes to the lack of information on this topic. So those were the findings. And then in the notes section, this is your commentary. So this is where you get to just write what you think about it. So for example, I did this one and I said, these are important findings that support our affinity group idea. It also tells us that students are really wanting depth. Um, so it's like my interpretation of what this is important for. That's why you put your name in the first column so that we know who wrote this section so we can go back to you and ask you more about it if we want to. Um, and you can see like, I don't know if I have any in here, but I frequently will say WTF. <laughs> Here's one. I say victim blaming article using routine activities theory. Do not cite this article is harmful. So like there are bad articles out there that just suck. Just say that it's okay. Um, we're the only ones who are going to see this sheet. So it's really like a conversation among us. Okay, what questions do you have about what's here so far? Do they normally have like what percentage of white pe people are in it? Or is it like, do you have to find it or like create that number yourself, I guess? Percentage? Usually usually it's there so it, they'll have the demographics of their um participants in qualitative studies it's often not there so sometimes you might have to figure it out and if 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 you can't that's another good question or another good point though taylor any of these could have an na right or a question mark like even here these are ones that i've done and i've been reading these kinds of articles for a decade so like i'm i'm very familiar with how they are 
and I still can't figure it out, right? So if you can't figure it out, you can't figure it out. That's probably not about you. That's probably about how they wrote the article. Yep. Hi, Blessing. I didn't see you. Come on. Hi. <laughs> Other questions? Can we, would one or two of you volunteer to share an article that you read and just sort of walk us through what you would put in each of the columns just as practice? Even though we didn't all read the same article, though we may have read some of the same. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me go. Oh, Caroline, what were you going to say? I was going to share, I had started going through two, but I cannot find my notes. Oh, okay. Let me check out the other spreadsheet real quick and then we'll come back. Okay. All right. So the other thing that's in here, so that's the relationship and sexual violence and minoritized people. The general RSV one, the only thing that's different about it is that in the place of minoritized population centered, instead here I have subject or topic. Um, and that's also a drop down. So this one is going to be probably be a little harder to put into boxes because some of them are so unclear as to what the topic is. So do your best to fit them. And if this isn't by like if, if these are a little off, it's not that big of a deal, but do your best to get it close to one of these topics just generally. And then, yeah, we'll sort them and, and see what we have. Um, but that is different but that is the only thing different about this spreadsheet everything else is the same um what did i think was it? oh yeah it was a really good article um yeah and then after you anna this part is a little bit tricky um but I can't think of a better way to do it. So after you read an article, so you will have read it from a to read and annotate article. So say I read this article about international students. After I annotate it, I will then move it to the red file. So I will go here and go to move to, and then click back and do click on red past tense and put it in the international students folder on the under the red past tense red because <laughs> read and red look the same <laughs> that makes this weird um but yeah and the other thing that's gonna happen is um there are gonna be mistakes like you're going to read an article and be so excited about it and go start typing in the spreadsheet and the box is going to fill up like it's already there and you're going to be like damn it how did that not get moved chances are it's because i read it because i have like a file i've printed out a whole folder of these to have with me all the time and so i do my best to go in and move them but sometimes i forget if it's already in the spreadsheet add another call add another do it again or just add to the annotation that's already there. Either way is totally fine. Okay, Caroline, do you wanna talk to us about what you read? Um, yeah, I just did, I started two, I got through essentially one. Um, okay. I did the intimate partner victimization among college students with and without disabilities, prevalence of relationship to emotional well-being. Okay. Uh, so like it gave a lot of like statistics in the beginning that was from like other research about like um, you know how prevalent it is for people with disabilities to experience um, intimate partner violence uh, or victimization um, and so what I did is I so I have a learning disability so what help what's helpful for me is actually copy and paste like important stuff and then put it into a document and then like kind of sort it out through there um, so like specifically like this study was a sample of like almost 30,000 college students enrolled at 40 in, uh, in wow. higher education. Yeah. That's a good study. Crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. Cool. I believe, yeah, it was a longitudinal study over 12 months. Um, or no, it was not. Um, it was, 
I believe then that is just a quantitative study. So it asked over if the tw last 12 months, if um, all the people who surveyed were in an intimate partner relationship that was either psychologically abusive, physically abusive, and or sexually abusive, which I really liked because it kind of went over all types, well not all types, it went over quite a few types of violence, which I appreciated. Uh -huh. um, and then it also talked about the measures of um, emotional well-being, like that um, people who have been through this, disabled people who have been through this, not only face a lot of barriers, but um, they're less likely to access those services that they're more likely to need. So that was really interesting. But yeah, I think that would have been a quantitative other yep. category. Good. Yeah. yeah, nice. Was there anything, as you were reviewing the article and looking at the spreadsheet, was there anything you were like, I think this is important, but there's not a place for it on the spreadsheet? Okay, if you find things that you feel like, oh my gosh, this would be super important for people to know and it's not on here, add it in the notes section. Um, and then we can, if a lot of people are seeing the same thing, we can add it. And it's just the spreadsheet is already so big. There are a million things we can add, but um, yeah, start with it here. Anything else, Caroline? Like, what do you, anything else you want to say about this process? Um, it was pretty simple. I think the hardest part was getting through the methods that they used um, to like actually complete the study. Um, but I definitely recommend like if you're going through this, like skim it over once. And then if you can just copy and paste stuff into a different doc because it has so much information just packed into one article. Um, so that really helped me when y'all are doing this. That's a really good suggestion. Thanks, Caroline. Other folks who read articles for today, what are, what are you thinking about? What came up for you as you were reading or thinking about where you would put stuff? It's kind of hard to do on a laptop, I will say, because this dang spreadsheet is so massive. So a couple of, strat I, like Caroline's strategy is a good one to put it someplace else and copy and paste it, that works. Um, the other option is to just really shrink the size of the spreadsheet so you can, it makes it harder to read, but you all have young eyes. <laughs> Maybe you're okay, <laughs> I don't know. Um, my screen, you, I don't know if you've ever, well, no, you haven't because we've never met each other in real life, but I have uh, my phone set with a giant font and my partner makes fun of me all the time. But um, the spills over the spreadsheet, make it smaller. Um, the other thing I would say is, I hope that this process becomes one that's relatively quick. Like I, you don't need to, read every article word for word for word. A, the introduction starts to all sound the same. One in four college women, blah, blah. Like I get so frustrated that everybody starts the article the same way. So when you get ones that start in a different way, make note because it rarely happens, but you'll get to the point where you can like basically skim and read the headings of that for, of those first sections where the review of the literature and that kind of stuff is because it's so similar throughout all the articles. And then the method section, you need to read closely enough to see what the methodology is, who the participants were, but you don't need, for the purposes of this project, you don't need to understand the like intimate details of how they did analysis. So you can skim through that part. Where you should spend most of your time on these articles is reading the findings and discussion section because that's the meat. That's what this article is telling us that's different than anything else. 
I think you'll be able to get to a place where one article will take you 20 to 30 minutes. Some don't even take me that long because I start reading it and I'm like, this is crap. And I'll just write in the spreadsheet, this is crap. Um, so that's okay. <laughs> um, you can do that. Just, please write why it's crap, but <laughs> like, um, there, there's bad research research out there. The other thing I was going to note is that in the folder, the queer and trans folder specifically, there's actually, a, there are actually a lot of articles that aren't about college students. So, and that's because there's not very much research on queer and trans college students. So that's why there's so much extra stuff in there. But please make note of that in the spreadsheet. So in the sample column, right on there, this was not a college student study. Um, and if it's not particularly good, just we can just take it out if it's not about college students. The re like I said, the reason I included so many non-college queer and trans articles is because there aren't very many on college students. So we have to have some information, so. Any questions, comment? I love that everyone's eating snacks. This is awesome but you're making me hungry. <laughs> Any um, other thoughts or questions? Okay, um, don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything. So I think this is our last hurrah. I don't think I'm meeting with any of you tomorrow or Monday or Tuesday. So um, just as an FYI for you, my plan is to sort of try and be offline December 16th through January 2nd. Um, I'll be checking sporadically, but I won't be as quick, if you call me quick, to respond to stuff um, during that time. But if you need something, please text me um, and we can, chat about it. You're free, feel free to work on anything that you're working on over the break. Um, I just got an email saying that folks on work study cannot work December 28th through 30th because you, it's their university holidays and you have to be, I don't understand it, but for whatever it's worth, if you work those days, log them on a different day if you're on work study. Um, and yeah, please take some time off too. I know you need money and I also know you need brain rest. So do your best to find the balance between those two things. We all need some rest. I don't like not hearing your voices. Can everybody say something, please? Yes, definitely take rest. <laughs> Merry, happy holidays. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. I'm super excited to see you all again in January. Um, yeah. Have an awesome break. Get some rest. Good luck if you have any more finals. We'll see you later. Yes. Bye. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Hey, Chris.